Welcome to Learn C Sharp in 5 minutes. Make sure to watch all the way through so you do not miss out on any crucial information. That being said, let's dive straight into it. What is an array? An array is used to store a collection of data, but it's often more useful to think of an array as a collection of variables of the same type stored at contiguous memory locations. Instead of declaring individual variables, such as string1, string2, etc., you can declare one array variable, such as underscore strings, and use underscore strings and the corresponding index, because a specific element in an array is accessed by an index. More on that in just a second. All arrays consist of contiguous member locations. The lowest address corresponds to the first element, and the highest address to the last element. When do we use arrays? We use them whenever we want to store a collection of uh, the same type of variable. And how do we use arrays? Well, let's take a look at how they function so it will make a little bit more sense. I took the liberty to create this visual representation on how arrays work. As you can see on the top right here, I've declared a string array by first specifying the data type. In this case, it's a value type of string. More on that in my other video, C Sharp in 5 minutes, data types. And then to specify that it's an array, you put those square brackets after the data type and then it's identifier. So in our case, it's my array. This being the square brackets right here, and then the identifier right here. Remember how I told you you can access the elements by its corresponding index value? That's what you're seeing right now. My array zero is actually the first value, even though it's at zero. That's just something you're going to have to grasp. Whenever it's index based, it means that it starts at zero. So if zero right here is the first value, what is our third value? If you said my array two, you're right, because it's our third value in our array. Pretty simple, right? So, right there. These values get stored at a certain memory address, and they are contiguous. So one value will always follow the other one. If we take a look at this right here, you can see the first one goes to the first box. The second one goes to the second one, even though it's the, it says number one. It's, that's just the index. It's still the second spot. And the third one goes to the third one. All right, so let's see what we can do with arrays. Let's start by declaring a string array. So first we specify the data type, now we put the square brackets and then the identifier. So let's call it my array to keep it simple. And let's actually declare it, let's see, equals new string array and then specify the size. We're going to hold five things in our array. So to set a value to the corresponding index, we just do my array, the identifier, and then square brackets. And let's say we want to set the, the second value to something equals hello world. Now, if I were to print out, print this out in general, it would, would only show hello world, but at the second spot. So let's do, let's do a for each loop. And we want to do for each um, underscore string. I'm only using the var variable because I already know that it's a string. As you can see, if I hover over, let's just specify the collection as well. My array. Now, if I hover over underscore string, you can see that it's of type string. So there's no real use of putting string there because variable is going to, uh, it's going to define it by itself. So if I do for each underscore string in the array. So for each string in the array, we want to console right line underscore string. This is going to loop through all of the strings inside the array. More on that in my other video, C sharp in five minutes loops. So let's go ahead and put a console.read line and debug this. As you can see, it's on the second spot and not the first one. If I were to do uh, my array zero, oops, that's a nine, zero, and say, let's say Microsoft. And if I were to print this out, you're going to see a more appealing look. As you can see, the first index is, even though it's at the first index here, it's a zero, it's at the first spot. And then the first spot right here, the first index being the second spot. You see how it works? You could also assign a, a list of things into a string variable. So let's say string array, let's say names. We want to do a file, oops, file, we gotta import system.io and then read all lines. 
Now, as you can see, this opens a text file, reads all the lines of a file, and then closes the file. As you can see, it's a string array by the type here. That's what it returns. So if I were to do, let's say we have a file called usernames.txt. This would read all the lines inside and put it inside here. So let's show a real example. Right, so I'm going to create a new text file on the desktop. Let's name it, let's see, usernames. Perfect. Let's open it in my text editor. I'm using Atom right now. There we go. As you can see, we have the file right here. So let's go ahead and add some usernames. Let's call it the first username being Bill, second one being George. Adam, Sarah, and Connor. Perfect. Now we have a list of uh, usernames. Let's close that down. Let's open our project. Open file in File Explorer, bin, debug. And let's actually put that in there. And then we get Visual Studio up and we drag this into the project itself. Now, as you can see, we have it right there. Now it's actually going to be able to find the file and put everything in here. So let's actually call it usernames. Perfect. And then we're going to loop through all of it and you'll see exactly how it works. For each variable username in usernames, console write line use, oops username perfect now if i were to debug this real quick let's uh, put a break right there you're going to see that this contains five five items if i click here we can see that the corresponding index is the first value so the first value of uh, the first index bill and in our list we had bill as our first one right we did indeed so if I were to uh, print this out, let's press F5, let it run. You can see that it prints out all the usernames. All right, for the assignment, I want you to create an array of type int that consists of 10 numbers and assign a value to each one. I hope this video was somewhat educational and I'll see you in the next one.